What a beautiful car. I am. Um, it's a five litre V8 portfolio automatic. It's Euro 5, 2010 on a 60 plate, has done 54,202 miles. Fuel consumption, urban, 16.5 miles per gallon. Extra urban, 35.3 miles per gallon. And combined is 25.2 miles per gallon. Has a 0 to 62 time of 5.5 seconds. A top speed of 155 miles per hour out of a V8, 380 brake horsepower, 32 valve engine. All the best looking cars on the road seem to have been uh, probably Jaguars over the years with a minor blip with the XJS. <laughs> and, uh, but this is absolutely gorgeous. It's mint inside and out, underneath the bonnet. It's just beautiful. Drives absolutely fantastic. And it, I think it's just gorgeous. It, so, it sounds fantastic, uh, looks fantastic and drives fantastic. What more could you want? Five litre V8. If you've got a Retmobile during the week and you want something to put a smile back on your face, then this is the vehicle. It's fairly price range these days. When you look what you can get for the money, um, it's just the best car you'll ever drive. It's, it's, it's awesome, absolutely awesome. I, as you can tell, I'm a Jaguar Land Rover, Range Rover guy. This, my ideal probably two car garage is one of these and a Range Rover Sport. So think of that what you will. Anyway, what's it got? It's keyless lock, keyless entry. So if you've got the key on your car's locked, I've done it wrong way around really, but come back to the car, just open the door, that's it car's open, get out of the car, press the button there, and it's locked. Also, pillarless doors there. Um, it's just, I mean, it, it looks like it's doing 150 miles an hour when it's, when it's parked. <laughs> so, fantastic colour combinations as well. Kind of black, dark grey metallic and the ivory leather. If, if I get in with this, you won't see me, so uh, I'll be losing this. The Jaguar vents here, Jaguar badge vents, color-coded vents. You've got the multi-spoke split rim, alloy wheels, Pirelli's all round. I'm gonna show you underneath the, the bonnet. Um, on the front there, we've got front parking sensors, the chrome vents or the chrome surround vents, high pressure headlamp wash, but the, the engine, these days, I mean, it opens the proper way and everything. Uh, these days, there's nothing to see in a car at all. It's, they're just boring. Nobody wants to look at a battery, do they? It, it's, but this piece of engineering, it, it's, it's a marvel. Um, I prefer the old days as well when you could uh, lift up the bonnet. We, we had a customer called uh, Mr. Brewer and the first thing he used to do was take his car home and get everything chromed and he'd, he'd spend a, a week polishing it. And, and the car was a work of art. You can't see too much these days, but because there's a big plastic cover on it. But what you can see is it's just it's as clean under the bonnet, you know, even on the sound deadening. There's no marks. There's no marks where it's lost its coolant and, you know, spoilt it all or, or it's, they even get damp and go mouldy. That's just not the case with this car. It's just, it's just mint. Absolutely mint. That's it. Right. It doesn't have rear privacy glass either. Uh, and when I see these cars, especially coupes like this, and they've got rear privacy glass, somehow it, it, 
the back end doesn't seem to match the front. It almost looks like a cut and shut vehicle. So without the rear privacy glass, it's all tinted and it's all beautiful. It just makes it look even longer and sleeker. So, you know, I, I, think, that, I think that's the way they should be. This little lip spoiler, the integrated uh, rear boot spoiler, chrome Jaguar handle stroke badge here. Here we go, we'll just, there's a little button underneath there. Lift that up. And harking back to the old days as well, the rear load space has got the kind of bars across, almost like a boat deck, so you can slide your, your luggage up. And, uh, but with it being across, it stops it sliding from side to side again. I've got a big case here, coat and so on. There's room for another big case. This is already, for, actually, that, that's, I need to put that, uh, that's not plugged in properly. So I'll just do that. Take that out, plug that in, and then fasten that. That should be right. So it's a hard rear load cover that goes up and down with the boot. So you no need to push anything back. Just chuck everything straight in. There's also another cubby hole underneath. Uh, so there's, there's, space, there's space for even more luggage. Uh, and I don't know, a couple of coats, stuff like that. So the best thing Stay there. It's got Baron Wilkins speakers too, but Who's going to listen to the radio when you've got that? It's, right, I'm going to take you for a ride now. I'm not going to bother sitting in the back seats. It's got two back seats. Be all right for, for kids, but um, it would cri <laughs> if you're an adult, it would cripple you. It's a two-seater. It's a two-seater with some space at the back to put your coat. Let's go. Okay, that's the key. Um, there is actually, I always say this is, there's never anywhere to put a key, but in here, there is, it's there. So uh, I, quite, I quite like that. So I'll put that back. Also, you've got two cup holders here. And what you can do, if you just pull that up and pull it forward, then perfect, proper Jaguar design, no cup holders on display and a nice armrest. So once you've got your foot on the brake, reaching up here to switch it on. It's here again, Jaguar. And listen, that engine, it's just, it's just heaven, honestly, it really is. Right, so before I go anywhere, I'll just show you how to um, pair a mobile to the Bluetooth system. So first of all, any screen, first of all, we're making sure that Bluetooth is on, then we're watching out at the bottom. We go over to the system, you can see down the side there you've got phone navigation and so on that's the home button it pulls this screen up so if it was on navigation for instance i'm going to agree with that but if it was on navigation you just click the home button then the it comes up at the side we want we don't want audio so i can go back we want phone here we go dock phone non change phone search new we want search new it's already picked the car up here, but I, I want it to pick it up from the system. I, I, I want the car to pick the phone up, not the phone to pick the car up. Sometimes you do it that way and it, and it just says no phone or not paired or whatever. Right, so here we go. Pair and dock, not paired, pair and dock. To pair and dock phone, enter 1322. So it's already generated a random pin code. 1322, two. pair. Allow contacts and favourites to sync. Allow. Jaguar there, waiting. Connected, that's it done.
phone dot. Okay, I'll just show you how to delete a mobile from the Bluetooth audio system in this 2010 Jaguar XK. So we're on nav at the moment, so there's a couple of things I can do. I can either click the back button there or the home button here. So we'll click home. Here we go. I've actually got a phone paired to the system at the moment. So it's a lot easier if you've not got a phone paired. But anyway, so settings at the top, click on settings. You've got register, voicemail, answer options, phone options, undock, change phone, search new. So th there's, t there's two ways I can do it. I'll go to change phone, click on change phone. Now see, you've got Barry's iPhone, which is docked, and you've got Ron's phone, which is a proper name for a Jaguar driver. Ron, here we go, dock or delete, so delete. Delete Ron's phone, okay. That's it, gone. Okay, I'll just show you how to set the sat-nav in this 2010 Jaguar XK. Um, first of all, we go to home. You've got navigation, click on navigation. And it's a Land Rover system, so it's dead simple. Destination entry. Address, points of interest, postcode. Postcode's again easier, so on postcode. We're Grosvenor Garage, Blackburn Road, Hyre Walton, Preston P, R. Now we go to the numbers it's gone automatically to the numbers a lot of them don't we need to put a spacing because it's only a two digit so i click space and four e a that's it okay now thinking about it watching destination waypoint it's all these all, all these arrows and you've put the destination in Anyway, click destination. Now, it's just saying destination's nearby, but it's, it's navigating to that point. So you have to press the destination. That's the one thing that's probably wrong with the, with the uh, Jaguar Land, Land Rover system, but, but that's it. Right, let's get going. Shall we try the memory seat Russian roulette? So one, you'll see there, Put it in park so we don't shoot up the forecourt and total something. So that's one, three. So there you go. Well, all we need to do, these seats here, for me, down, back, you've got here the total backrest that's wrapping the seat round me. And I can move this, I can move the squad the way as well if I want. So, and then click on M, click on one, that's it. But also, I've got the height and reach adjustable multi-function steering wheel. And then I've got the door mirrors too. Uh, so door mirrors, we'll set the door mirrors. And you see the lovely Jaguar rear haunches in the mirror. It's, it's a sight and sound to behold. So here we go. Let's go. Am I comfortable there, really? A bit further. I should have put a microphone at the back, but it's it's throwing it down. And there's a lot of traffic coming now. So you've got the rotary gear selector, which pops up out of the gear tunnel when you switch the car on. Seriously, if this car doesn't bring a smile to your face, you are completely dead or you're an EV zealot. Paddle shift, listen to this. We're just doing, we're doing 30 miles an hour, but. <laughs> it's a 40 limit along here, by the way, so don't be reporting me.
be able to put it into manual. We're in second there. Click to third. On to fourth. And if you just leave it, it'll go back to drive. Or you can click it to sport here by putting that down. Pressing the selector down and just turning towards you. So that's in sport. Holds it in gear longer. Makes the throttle more responsive. Whoopee. So as I say, this car, five litre, and with what your Tesla's dropped in the last 12 months, you could have bought this outright, paid for the fuel you're using and your insurance, and you, you're no worse off. But you've, you've gained in it smiles per gallon and as I say there'll be uh, I get a load of stick on my YouTube channel and on, on Twitter um, EVs are fine they do a job if it suits you buy one if you want one buy one no problem but don't tell me that my or my EV will do not 60 in three seconds or something. It, is, it takes five, 5.5 seconds to do not 62 in this. But all the stuff that happens in this car to get it from not 62 in 5.5 seconds, the valves being precisely timed not to hit the pistons, eight pistons shooting up and down in a V formation. The, the fuel being injected at the pr precise moment, the fuel injection system igniting the spark at the, just at the right compression, the, the right position in the cylinder. And then the heat it produces and the fumes it produces being shoved out the back to make that glorious noise and through the, the manifold noise, you know, you, you just can't, you can't reproduce that an electric motor. <laughs> Black and Decker. You, you may as well have a Black and Decker under the bonnet. So, they, uh, they do a job, but they'll never replace it. Certainly a V8 for fun. I mean, this this is just it's just absolutely beautiful Jaguar. I I, I always see things, you know, German engineering is its best, Japanese engineering is its best. Well, that that's their best. It's not ours. This is this is perfect. Land Rovers are perfect. So what they should say is. German engineering at, at its best, which is 90% as good as British engineering, in my opinion. Absolutely beautiful. We've got cruise control. It's, it's actually a while since I've been in a Jag, but the, the buttons are on the steering wheel on the right hand side here. So, there's a cost. <laughs> Car stopped in the road. I don't want to cruise control into the back of it. But now, right, so cruise control, cruise override. That's it. You just, no switching on, no nothing. I want cruise, that's it. On. So you can cancel there. I cancel like so. And then I can click resume. And it goes back. It's accelerating to what I had it set before. It'll go off if I touch the brake. Cruise control will go off. It does that in every car, no big deal. But listen this, hang on, I'm just gonna drop it into third. I, I was I was reading an advert for a Porsche Taycan 
and he, he said something like Porsche they'd pay extra in a Porsche Taycan to get a speaker that makes an engine noise <laughs> extra they'd pay extra to get an engine noise if that's what you want why don't you just buy a Jag <laughs> with what you with what your Porsche Taycan's dropped in 12 months, you could probably buy three of these, perhaps. You could have three of these in your garage. Different colours, you have a convertible. And, or you, you, could, you could have an F-Type an XF, perhaps an XJS. Uh, listen, that. Uh, right, 50 mile an hour, third. And if you're in second, I'll do it in second. If you're in second, you get the type of noise that uh, the cap on backwards boys make. Love it. It's uh, it's my weekend off this weekend. It, I'm not going to pull over there. I've, I've remembered to read the service history. But, oh, vanishing point. Now, around this corner, around this roundabout, should I say, nice and flat. Did I mention it was invisible to Kia's? Let's go. Oh, invisible to Kia's and tippers. So we We've got the seats there, three position electric memory seats. Electric windows here, your power folding door mirrors too, and electrically operated. Nice screen here. Um, climate control, CD, your home screen, your off button. Here, right, We've got a checkered flag there. Right, so, we're in drive, I'm just clicking into sport, goes down, click the chequered flag, it's gone into dynamic mode confirmed. Isn't that just the best sound ever? Now, I come off here, just watch this person here, behind me. Seventy's not fast enough on a slip road. Listen, it changing down. Right, well, I, the way I normally go, I'd go on Walton Summit, 
and come around the back. And then I've got get stuck at the, the level crossing. So I'm going to go back up the motorway. In, in, in this, you've just got to. I, I just don't know what's going on there. And, and I don't think they do either. Right, I'm going to hit the loud pedal in a second. So we've got dynamic. Seeing you here in the Skoda, just stop my demonstration, but. Now I'm going too fast. I'm going to let her pull out. It's just, what about the car? What about the car? What else is there? Ah, sorry, must remember. So go to home. Here we go. I'm going to tuck in here. Heated steering wheel. Heated and cool seats. So there we go, that's cooled. If I press up like so, there you go. So. You've got three positions for heated and three positions for cold. The air conditioning comes up through the perforations in the seat. Keeps your back cool on a, a nice, on a warm day. As you can see, it's not exactly warm today. Heated front windscreen. Here's me calling the guy that was doing 70 plus down the slip road and, and I'm accelerating <laughs> towards the roundabout. Oh well, do as I say, yeah. I'm just gonna let it slow down now. Oh, now there's a this shitty tie can behind us. Be going. Wait, I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let him catch up and then, and then give this a blip. Let him know what a real car sounds like. So there we go. There's front windscreen. Rear windscreen. You should, I should let him overtake us. In fact, I'm going to let him overtake us. Can I put this window down a little bit? Oh. Cut the corner much.
guaranteed to bring a smile to your face. Yeah, probably a lot of people would have waited till the path was clear before they <laughs> came across the, the road. And risk getting T-boned. So the heated seats are working perfectly. Dashboard, left hand side, speedo in the centre. You've got what gear you're in at the top, information display it's showing the clock at the moment. If I click on there, at the moment it's showing how many miles I've done. That's the range, 88 miles left before I need to fill up average fuel consumption I won't I won't read that to you because the car's just been ticking over while I've been photographing it average speed 12 miles an hour so that shows you how long it was ticking over for and um, bad you shouldn't even ticking over right okay um, yeah so so that's it on the left hand side you have your uh, you change the source your radio, you've got, you can change tracks, that's volume control, now I, I was looking for, before for the, for the power socket and these are that well engineered, I didn't notice it. <laughs> There's a, what, what you used to call the ashtray, but now it's an oddman's tray and a power socket, not, a, not an ashtray and a cigarette lighter. Hold well, on, let's just check, has it got us? It's a cigarette lighter! <laughs> I, I always remember testing one of those with my fingers to see if it was hot, and it was. A big van ready to... Uh, run into the back of me. Wow. I need to turn these uh, heated seats down, they're boiling. I'm gonna knock it out of dynamic, knock it back into drive and then we're back into tweed jacket mode. Nice drive in the country or to some foreign location. Splash and dash at the motorway service station. Just fill it up with fuel. No three hour wait. And uh, endless horizons. Don't buy it, please. <laughs> please don't buy it. They had a lazy battery on it as well. We just put a new battery on it. Just proper cars. Right. Well, I'm getting I'm getting depressed now because I'm nearly back at the garage and it means I won't be driving this car. So I can't find anything wrong with it. Brakes are perfect. Drives perfect. No vibrations through the steering wheel, no pulling anywhere, just a lovely, lovely car. And we took this in part exchange as well, um, and the, the, the re I mean, the reason, oh well the reason he gave us for swapping was that uh, his mother couldn't get in, his elderly mother couldn't get, get in the car. Um,
I'm not, I'm not so sure I could have done that. <laughs> anyway, right, okay, that's it. No more. I'm finished. I'm just going to show the outside once again. I'm just going to cut the outside of the vehicle in once again. And when you look at the cars these days, the, the designs, I look at Teslas and I think, oh good God, they're awful. And, the, and the, the electric cars with all the plastic on the front, and they just look like they're made out, well, they look like they're made out of Lego, the old square Lego before you could get nice rounded Lego. So, I'm back at the garage now, thoroughly depressed. I'm going to have to go to Nikos tonight to cheer myself up, I think. And uh, thanks for watching. Oh, look, little squirrel there. Just, just sat in the middle of the forecourt. Let's see if what there's. We have a squirrel feeder here because if we, if we don't feed them, they go across the road. And then I'm, I'm in and out of the office stopping traffic. So, all do donations gratefully received. It cost me 12 quid a week <laughs> to keep that squirrel feeder um, topped up. And they, they, broke the, they broke the perspex on the front, so I've just put a wooden panel over the front. Now, they're not sure how to get in. I, I'm trying to train them. I have to keep propping the top open. You, you might be able to see there. I have to prop the top open with a nut so that they can lift it up. But there was a squirrel this morning. I tried to video it, but it was too late getting the camera out. And it's getting hold of the, the top with its legs and then jumping up and trying to get down before it shuts again to get to get inside instead of just pushing it up. That must be a particular dim squirrel. <laughs> it's, uh, it must be the water here. It's affected us all. Right, thanks for watching. I love this car. Carpet over mats, Baron Wilkins speakers, just just beautiful. Thanks for watching. Ta-da.